Hello, welcome to the Imperfect Show this week. My name is Jeremy Stalnecker. This is my wife, Susana, and a special edition for you this week. This weekend is our 22nd wedding anniversary. I got it right the first time, 22nd <laughs> yeah. wedding anniversary. And we wanted to, uh, to talk on uh, the occasion of this momentous event about marriage. Now, marriage is something that we talk about often and... Uh, even if that's not the main topic, it's something we kind of veer into. That's where we live right now. Um, marriage and kids and stuff. Uh, it works its way into all of our conversations. But uh, specifically, I want to talk about marriage today. And uh, I, I don't know, hopefully encourage you. We've been married now 22 years. And the title of this show, The Imperfect Show, probably came from our marriage more than anything. I think so. We don't have it figured out. <laughs> yeah. Um it is imperfect. Sometimes people look at other people and think, well, they've got it all figured out or uh, they've been doing this for a while, so it must be okay or whatever the case. And it's, it's a challenge. All of life is a challenge. The fact that you've been doing something longer than someone else doesn't necessarily make it easier. In fact, sometimes it makes it a little more difficult. And um, as wonderful as marriage can be and as wonderful as it is sometimes, uh, it's not wonderful all the time. It can be a real challenge and uh, throughout the different stages of life. And I think more than anything, we just want to encourage you today, wherever you find yourself, maybe you're not married yet. Um, maybe the encouragement to you is that marriage can be wonderful. <laughs> I feel like a lot of people talk about marriage like it's a survival thing. Right. Like yes. you get to a big anniversary and you're like, we made it. We just, mm -hmm. we survived it. Uh, marriage can be wonderful and it really is a lot of time, uh, a lot of the time. Uh, maybe you've been married for a while and you're struggling with some things and trying to work through some things. Maybe you have just moved beyond that honeymoon phase after a year or two, a couple of years, um, and things are feeling a little bit different. I don't know where you are in your life and marriage. Um, again, maybe you're not married yet, but we want to encourage you and just share some of our marriage story. <laughs> I was going to say advice. Oh, no. It's not really <laughs> advice, but uh, some of our story. So 22 years. Yeah. You made 22. it. <laughs> we, made, we made it. Yeah, we made we it. We made it. Because I think it's not been all peaches and cream for you. No, yet. no, it's been wonderful every minute. Um, it's every funny because today I was watching uh, Molly, our daughter Molly, she pulled out some old videos and our wedding video was one of the ones that yeah. she pulled out and she was watching it today. And We had to actually find a VCR to, <laughs> to watch it. Um, but I was uh, watching a little bit of it with her. I just couldn't. So it's kind of cringy. So it just, it's very 90s. We got married in the late 90s. So it's just, it's you know. But uh, I was telling Jeremy, I kind of was watching it and I was thinking, man, like sometimes I wish it could be as simple as that. You know, like we seem so happy and just like just excited about the future and all of that. And um, not that we're not sure. happy now, yeah. but all of marriage just isn't like that. And I think it was soon after we got married, uh, maybe not soon, but. Not, I would say shortly after we got married, we realized that it wasn't all happy, like yeah. wedding happy, and, sure. you know, exciting and all those things. And so it can be, it can be really difficult. Um, but yeah, I kind of was, I was getting a little sentimental when I was watching the video today, just thinking, man, like I just wish it could be like that always, you know? Yeah, it can be challenging. And I think particularly if you're younger when you get married, maybe it's a blessing that you're naive enough to yeah. just yeah, roll maybe. into it. So we got married. We had a year of college left. We were 21. We were 21. We got married in California, but our college was in Florida. So we, uh, we had kind of the only thing we owned was a uh, Buick Century. So if you've ever seen a Buick Century, it was a Burgundy Buick Century. That was the only thing we owned. So we got married, went on our honeymoon, came home, packed up a U-Haul trailer, and drove across country to finish school. Um, we didn't really have a place to live. I had kind of talked to somebody about renting a trailer. It wasn't even a mobile home. It was more of a trailer. <laughs> yeah. A trailer in uh, Pensacola, Florida, where we got married or where we went to school. And uh, we showed up and moved in there and worked and finished school and then went into the Marine Corps. So um, you're just naive enough at that point in your life to, to make it work. And then we had kids, Pretty Marine quickly. Corps, went to Iraq, came home. Worked at a church, pastored a church, um, and now we're doing what we do now. So a lot has changed in that 22 years. 
A lot has changed. A lot has changed. <laughs> Um, and some of it's been great, yes. you know, our four kids and, mm-hmm. and I think everywhere we've lived and everywhere we've been a part of something, we've really enjoyed it. Uh, but there have been challenges and struggles and I don't think we were maybe as prepared for adult life as we should have been. We just really didn't know. And so you figure out along the way and I, I think we're just finally starting to figure some things out. So. <laughs> Which, you know, in some ways, like you were saying, is, is a great thing. If you're able to, I mean, there's a lot of things that we've experienced together that has grown us into the people that we are today together right um there's a lot of things that we've had to uh figure out together uh go through together and we wouldn't be able to make some of the decisions that we're making now if it hadn't been for those things uh we wouldn't you know maybe have the marriage we have now or the relationship that we have now if we hadn't gone through some of those things early on in our marriage and so you know that's one of the i guess maybe blessings of us being (laughs) even enough back then yeah (laughs) to not know what was you know coming and to not really be, uh, I would say, full-grown adults, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Yet. Yeah. And not really had a lot of life experience to know, you know, what we were going to be facing. And so, uh, I think maybe that for us that was a blessing that we have, you know, had to kind of figure all those things out <clears throat> when we were so young. What are when you look back? What were some of the biggest challenges of the last I mean, twenty-two years? I mean, we're not dying, so no. hopefully we have another, you know, at least twenty-two in front of us. Um, Going back though, what were some of the what have been some of the biggest challenges um, in our marriage up to this point? Um, I would say maybe the biggest challenge has been communication. Um, one of the biggest things that we've had to learn is how that different people communicate <clears throat> different ways. And uh, for me, I feel like that's something that I've learned is that we are di- really really different people. <laughs> and I would say that Jeremy and I are probably as opposite as maybe. People can be maybe personality wise we do have a lot of similar interests sure but I think as far as personality I feel like we're pretty opposite yeah we process things differently we communicate differently and so I think just learning that has probably been one of the biggest challenges is just understanding okay just because I am saying this doesn't mean you understand it the way that I'm trying to communicate it and so I think just understanding that I need to uh, say things in a way that feeds to your or whatever your communication style in a way that you will yeah. really get what I'm saying in a way that I'm trying to say <clears throat> it. Um, or when you're asking me, hey, I wish you would really tell me like this when you're wanting this and me saying that. Um, so I think that's been one of the challenges, just figuring out communication yeah. um, in a way that we understand each other and that we can be on the same page about things. That's one of the ways we're different. When I said what is one of the big challenges, I thought you'd say, you know, this period of time, this place mm-hmm. that we were, this thing that we were okay. going through. And instead you said communication. Right. So communication, also difficult. <laughs> I think that's But been we've had some periods of time in our life that were a challenge yeah. too. I think that's been through all of the mm-hmm. phases of our marriage. I think we've learned how to learn to communicate because uh, I think every life stage changes you and you kind of yeah. grow over time. And we're different people now than we were, you know, when we got married in a lot of ways. And so I feel like you have to learn communication in a different way, yeah. kind of in every phase of life and every phase of your marriage. And particularly when you do get married younger, you're still maturing and growing as a mm-hmm. human being and even changing really as a human being and then circumstances in life and the mm-hmm. challenges and so forth change you. So you're married to a person that, a, you know, a snapshot in time at that wedding picture you're a different person then than you are as you move through those phases mm-hmm. of life. So when you're married to someone, you have to learn who they are becoming and, and what's changed and constantly evolving and constantly learning. And it's interesting when people talk about getting bored with their spouse or, you know, um, there's just nothing there anymore. It's not exciting anymore. I, I know what they mean by that, but we're, we're constantly changing. And I think if you're constantly trying to adjust and, and learn... Um, it, it doesn't have to be boring. And, and again, I get life and how life works, but it doesn't have to be a boring relationship. Yeah. Yeah, things do change. And I think if we had talked more, especially like maybe now if I'm saying, thinking about what were some of the more challenging moments of our marriage, probably those first couple of years, I think were one of the more difficult times. Yeah. And I think if we had learned, maybe talked more during that time about you know what we were actually thinking and feeling and all of that, that would have helped us so much during that time because the first two years we experienced so much 
transition and changes and uh we had two kids by the time we were married two years and it was just so so much that changed for us and then um i would say probably when we made uh, a switch in kind of our life what we were doing when you got out of the marine corps and we started serving at on staff at a church i would say that too was another time that i can look back on that was one of the more difficult times in our marriage yeah, it was a period of transition and mm-hmm. and we hadn't learned exactly how to how to do that um, before we got married i think one of the things that we could have learned that would have helped us too because uh, i look at a few things what could have helped us what could have prepared us communication is certainly one of them um, how to handle finances was probably mm-hmm. another big one and how to view finances not handle them and manage them but how to view finances yeah. and, and how to um, you know, there's the simple things of putting budgets together and those things, but why finances are important and, and how they impact your life. And I think some of the struggles we've had uh, historically have been because we just didn't really understand that mm-hmm. for, you know, a significant part of our lives. Mm-hmm. And that was a real challenge. Um, and then kids, you know, that, that throws a whole different uh, element yeah. into your relationship as well. It does too. And none of our kids were planned per se by us <laughs> they were planned so, by god but not by yeah. us yeah and so that was really uh i think for us that was uh, just something i don't we never talked about kids before we got married i yeah. think we mentioned this on the show before that that was one of the things we just never talked about we i guess we thought we would have kids but we never talked about really yeah. we never talked about having kids <clears throat> right we never talked about yeah. how many we'd like to have or we how never many talked about a lot of we, things no no and so that was something that we didn't really i don't feel like we were adequately prepared to accept into our lives yeah and so that was interesting for us too. yeah yeah so you go through these moments of transition and really that's what life is is a, is a transition it's one transition to the next and marriage is going through those transitions with other people <laughs> and mm-hmm. and try to keep everyone on the same page along the the way and and juggle the personalities and emotions and, and all of that that goes into a relationship um, and it is a struggle but but on the other hand it is it is great and I do feel bad when people talk about marriage in the sense that you're just trying to make it you know mm-hmm. you guys made it or we made it or uh, often you'll hear and see you know social media posts from someone around their, their wedding. It hasn't always been easy. It's always, you know, there's been a lot of struggles, but here we are and we love each other. And it's almost like we can love each other in spite of how bad it is. Um, yeah. And it is challenging, but but marriage is not bad, particularly if we understand uh, God's plan for marriage, um, you know, what that means, how, how he intended for marriage to be mm-hmm. entered into and for people to go through that. When we understand the selfless nature of uh, a close relationship like that and what love means and what that looks like and how to take care of each other and the fact that we get to go through life together and that ultimately I think when it's done right, each person in that marriage is more than they would be by themselves. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's not to say that if you're not married, you're not complete or something. It's, that's not it. But when you are married and it is what God has created and designed and you're doing it to the best of your ability, the way that it's supposed to be done, uh, you really are more than you would be by yourself. Mm -hmm. And it, um, I think it makes you better in, in every area. We talked about this on uh, last week's show. Where we talked about living to a higher standard. And one of the reasons you do that is because it causes you to grow. And uh, man, I don't think there's anything that causes you gr- to grow more than, than being married. Mm-hmm. Uh, because you have to. You have decisions to make every day mm-hmm. that impact someone other than just yourself. Yeah. And really, I feel like being uh, each other's... You, you hear people say each other's cheerleader, but I don't yeah. know. I like to say like encourager. Right. Like there should yeah. be one person that is, that you know, is on your side, is encouraging you to do the things that you are good at. Yeah. But maybe to do the things that maybe you don't yourself know that you're good at. Yeah. And just kind of pushing you to be the best version of yourself, I guess yeah. you can say. And uh, I was having this conversation with our girls the other day. I don't think I told you this, but I was talking to them about uh, boys and... <laughs> uh just all of that and what um the kind of person that you should be with Hmm. and i uh told and they always kind of laugh about us because we are very different people and just in our personalities and all of that and so they kind of we all kind of always laugh about that and so the girls were kind of 
joking with me about that. Well, what about dad? And how come, like, how did you guys, you know, end up together or whatever, you know? <laughs> I think it's a mystery so, to a lot um, of people. <laughs> no, but I told them, I said, you know, I said, there's, you know, a lot of difficult parts of marriage and there's a lot of difficult things about being married to a person. And you have to, especially if you're like opposites and all of those things. But I told them one of the things about your dad is that he's always encouraged me to um, do things that I would maybe normally not do or be uncomfortable about doing or not think that I'm good at or... Um, and you have always encouraged me in that way. Like you can totally do that. You're, you're so good at that. You would be so good at that. And, um, and that's what I think is so important about being with a person like that. It's so important to be with someone like that. That's encouraging you to do things, not only that you're good at, but maybe that you don't realize you are. Right. And so I think when you are, have been married for a while, you should be able to look at yourself and say, okay, I would not be in a positive way. I would not be the person I am today if it wasn't for this other person in my life. Hmm. And so um, I think it's really, really important yeah. as you grow in your marriage. What's, uh, what's one of the biggest lessons you've learned being married? So, I mean, communication is important. Being um, you know, an encourager is really important. Mm -hmm. um, if you're giving advice to someone who is either getting married or they're in a marriage that's you know, maybe struggling a little bit, uh, what's one piece of advice you'd give based on your own experience being married? It's really difficult, I think, sometimes when people are struggling in their marriage to, you know, talk to them about yeah, like, well, it's kind of abstract. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you should do this or you should do that. But I feel like the one of the biggest lessons that maybe I've learned is that it's not about me. Yeah. And it's always about the other person. And it's about you've me. Said this before. <laughs> it is <laughs> for me. It's about you. <laughs> but that's kind of what I always come back to. Like if I get irritated or upset or you know whatever, well, that's because of me. That might not necessarily be because of anything mm. you've done. I might just be irritated because I'm having a bad day or I'm just, you know, and so I feel like that is one of the biggest lessons to be learned is that it's not always about me, is that it's about the other person. And um, I think we've said this on here before too, yeah. and when talking about love and, and all of that, it's, it's always about the person that you're loving. It's not about, uh, it's not about you. Right. And so that's kind of the first question that I tend to always ask is, well, are you having a difficult time because you actually are having a difficult time and there's a problem? Or are you having a difficult time because you're being selfish or you're thinking about yourself, you're thinking about how, um, you know, things that you wish that he would do or that you wish would happen yeah. that are not happening. Um, what, you know, what's the reason for that? And a lot of times it does come down to just being selfish and not considering the other person first or not considering the other person's feelings or maybe something that you've done to them that maybe you need to apologize for or, yeah. um, you know, but I would say that's one of the biggest lessons probably is just loving the other person because they're a person that needs love and yeah. they're not going to get that same love from anywhere else but you. Right. Um, I mean, they could look for it somewhere yeah, else. Yeah, I guess they could find but, it somewhere um, else. You are the person yeah. that they should be getting that from. If that person is your spouse, uh, you're the person that they should be getting that from. Right. And I think that's something that, that I've always gone back to is, um, you know, you can find that somewhere else, but the place that... The person that you should be getting that from is for me and um that's kind of I think. yeah i think probably that's you know also the biggest lesson that i've learned and try to communicate to other people and people will say you know i'm, I'm getting ready to get married what should i what should i do well you should you know i think you should be a christian you should <laughs> uh, walk with god and understand who god created you to be and and live to be the very best um, reflection of what God has created you to be. Mm -hmm. Don't focus on what the other person is doing or saying or how they're acting. Focus on being the right kind of person. Mm -hmm. um, and so I've said that often to other people before they get married. In the middle of a marriage, sometimes it's a difficult relationship and their spouse is not treating them the way they should and, and sometimes legitimately so. What can I do in that? Well, you can pray and ask God to, you know, to work in your spouse's heart and life. But, but what you can do, what you can control is you can be the kind of person that uh, or be the person that God created you to be, to live selflessly and to um, really focus on yourself in the right way, not in the selfish way, but in the mm -hmm. right way. Uh, and again, that's easy advice to give. It's harder to live that out. But, but I think that's the essence of what it is to be, uh, to have a biblical marriage. It's, it's to live a selfless life, to live, um, you know, don't marry someone because of what they'll do for you. Mm -hmm. Um and there's, there's an aspect of that, of course, in, in, you know, particularly an intimate relationship, but it really needs to be more focused on what you can do for them. Um, so I, I think you're right. I think you could find that somewhere else, but, mm -hmm. but really, I don't know that you can. I don't know that someone who would pull you away from your spouse or someone who mm -hmm. would 
uh, even say they love you and that to get you away from your spouse, they're not doing what's best for you. Mm -hmm. So really, it's it's a false love, and and it's it's in the context of a um, a right relationship, a marriage relationship, where that should be found. And uh, again, it's it's hard to live. I think that's that's really the struggle, though, is can I live in a selfless way that meets you know, your your needs, meets your spouse's needs, mm -hmm. and um, and helps them to fully be what what God you know, created them to be. Mm -hmm. And I think when that is right, and particularly when two people are attempting to do that, there's really nothing you can't overcome. Mm -hmm. And it, it makes life, you know, really worth living. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it means you're coming home to someone you care about and someone you decided to love. And, and um, you know, it, it, it is what marriage was created and designed to be. Yeah. I think one of the things that in more recent years I've really learned that has helped, not just myself, but as I've been talking to other people about their marriage and things like that is a true understanding of biblical marriage and something that I wish maybe I had learned earlier on. Yeah. But I'm thankful that, that, you know, just in the last few years, that's something I've really started to, um, get a hold of, I guess. And then now in, you know, the place where we are in our lives with our kids, being able to teach that to our girls, especially, mm. and knowing what it actually means to be a godly wife and, um, to have, um, a biblical marriage and that you can't have that if you're not being the person that you're supposed to be. Right. Um, like you just said. And so what is, what actually the biblical roles in marriage look like and all of that. And I think that's something that really has impacted me just in the last few years. And I've been able to go back to that, you know, what I've had a difficult time or, um, like, I don't know, yeah. um, how to be this person in, you know, just as we're changing, even in our life stage with the kids and, you know, all of that looking to the future, and that's really helped me just in the last few years, um, not just for myself, but yeah. as in talking to other people also. Yeah, I think people did try to teach us that. Maybe. It, it's a funny Maybe. thing, though. Before you need it, you don't really realize, right. Right. you know. So, don't oh, you think no, you know. You're like, yeah. oh, it makes sense. But I yeah. don't know that I really understood what that means right. um, until now. And I yeah. wish maybe I had made more of an effort to learn or paid attention. or I don't know. Yeah. Um, but I just feel like I did not get really have a hold on it until just really the last few years. Right. And then I, I think, you know, kind of the other thing that goes along with this is you have to decide in the beginning that you're not going to quit mm -hmm. <laughs> because there, there are reasons to quit. I mean, they're, they're not, they're not, I don't think valid many of, you know, most of the time, mm -hmm. I think, um, there are very few valid reasons. Um, but as you go through life with another person, there are going to be circumstances that push you to the place where you go, you know, maybe this isn't the best thing or maybe, something else would be better or whatever, you have to decide on the front end, I'm not going to quit. And that provides a tremendous sense of security. Mm. I, I, I've said this many, many times, that on our worst days, when we're having you know, an argument about something or something hasn't gone well in some other area of our lives, we're struggling to deal with that and you know, going through the stuff that you go through in life, on our worst days in our marriage, um, I've never had the thought that this is going to be the event that ends it, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Because we decided early on that, that that wasn't a conversation that we were going to have. Well, that provides so much security for you to be able to really go through difficult things and, and have hard times, but on the other side of that, um, persevere. And it's not just, <clears throat> again, it's not just surviving, but it's understanding we're going to make it through this because we've already decided we're going to have to process it. Maybe we need to get some help to process it and to deal with it. But um, whatever it takes, that is going to happen. This mm -hmm. is not the thing that's going to end us. And I think a lot of marriages, a lot of relationships, they operate out of fear. Um, they won't be honest with each other. There are things that will not happen that should, things that do happen that shouldn't, because one or both people in that relationship are afraid that if something doesn't go right, if something changes, if, you know, whatever, mm -hmm. that it may be the end. And so fear is what motivates instead of love. And love is very sacrificial. And love, the Bible tells us, is without fear. There is no fear in love. And, uh, you know, all of the things that we talked about, but that really, I think, has to be a part of a, mm -hmm. a strong relationship. And then what do you do if you feel like quitting? You know, because you're going to feel like that. I have felt like that. Maybe yeah. you've never felt like that, but I have never. felt like... Um, and I mean, that's part of another story, but you know, I have come to the point where I'm like, I don't want to do this anymore. And, um, you know, literally felt like that, but what keeps you from actually moving forward with that, 
um, you have to decide what that's going to be, you know, for maybe it's a choice at the beginning that, you know, I'm never going to go there. Or maybe it's, um, you know, what is it that keeps you from actually throwing in the towel and say, yeah. okay, this is enough. Um, for me, it was my faith and knowing that that's not what God's plan was for our marriage. And, you know, thinking back on, okay, we made this decision and I decided that that I'm going to do this. And so it was then evaluating and saying, okay, like, what do we need to do to make this what it's supposed to be? And so I think you have to decide for yourself what, what's that, what that's going to look right. like, because you are going to feel like yeah. at times you're yeah. going to feel like quitting. And for some people, you know, that means different things, but maybe it's just going to be like, oh man, this is a hard day, but maybe it's a hard time in your life, a hard thing that you're going through in your marriage. And you're like, this is so not worth it. I don't, or tired. I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah. And so um, you just have to decide what that what's going to keep you from doing that. Yeah. And again, go back to last week's episode of living for a higher purpose mm -hmm. or to a higher standard. The standard has to be more than how you feel. And so many people, they get married because of how they feel. And if feeling is kind of the glue that holds you together, then when the feeling changes, then mm -hmm. you know, why wouldn't you separate? Mm -hmm. um, you'll never be so strongly, you know, emotionally in love. <laughs> um, that that's going to get you through a lifetime of the ups and downs of life. There has to be more to it than that. And it is living to that higher purpose and that higher standard and being committed to that. Um, honest self-evaluation, realizing when you're the problem, you know, there are so many other aspects of that. And, and, and honestly, sometimes it's just getting perspective that a counselor or someone else can give to you that you can't get on your own. But that commitment that regardless of how I feel, I will do what is right. Um, that will carry you through some moments that you might look back on later and go, man, I'm glad I didn't, mm -hmm. didn't respond emotionally. I'm glad mm -hmm. I didn't respond out of my feelings. Uh, marriage is a long road. <laughs> it's intended to be that way, but it's a great one. And, and um, you know, life has ups and downs. The difference between uh, life by yourself and life married is that you're going through those ups and downs with another person, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, which can make the, the downs not so bad and, and the ups, you know, much better. Um, Sometimes it creates ups and downs that you wouldn't have otherwise. It's, you know, it's a very uh, interesting uh, journey for sure, but uh, it can be a great one. You just have to be willing to work through and to learn and to grow and to, to change and to adjust and to stay committed to the marriage uh, that God gave to you. Mm -hmm. I think that's something that people maybe don't, you know, think about it. It, it maybe in that way is staying committed uh, for the long yeah. The long run, because it is going to change. It's going to look different, you know, 20 years from now for us yeah. than what it looks like now. <laughs> um, you know, if you've just recently gotten married, it's going to look different in 20 years than it does now. Right. And so people change over time. Marriage changes over time. But I think just being in it together and uh, really looking at it like that, you know, regardless of, uh, you know, where your kids go, where they end up, it's, you know, you're doing life with one other person that is... Uh, there with you and you're doing it together and you're figuring out together. Yep. Yep. That's it. <laughs> that's, that's, that's it. That's, it. that's all. That's the whole no, thing. No. But. In 27 minutes. <laughs> right. But uh, I hope that's encouragement to you. At least some thoughts. There, there again, is so much to it. And uh, marriage is a work in progress. I don't think you ever stop working on your marriage. And if you do, um, you may be living in the same house, but you're certainly not enjoying the marriage that, that God intended for you. It's, it's a continual work and continual growth, continual sacrifice. And, and uh, great joy comes with that as well. And I hope that's an encouragement to you. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. If you'd like to leave some comments or leave a comment, we'd like to get that comment from you, share the content out, and uh, let others know about it. Thank you for watching, and we will talk to you next week. Next week.